It's time to give you a grand tour of the Black Dog Observatory. I'll cover everything from the Skyshed Pod dome itself to the telescope and accessories inside. It's a clear night tonight, so I'm setting up to finish off an exciting deep sky project in the Black Dog Observatory, and I'll share that image at the end of the video. Whether you're interested in upgrading to a personal observatory in the near future, or you just wanna see what I've been up to for the last six months, I think you're gonna like this one. I've had a few clear nights to photograph the night sky from my observatory so far this year, and I'm finally understanding why having one of these makes such a big difference. I had no idea how big of a change it would make to my mindset of a night of astrophotography in the backyard. When you remove the time and effort it takes to set up a full deep sky imaging rig, you end up having a lot more time to take actual photos. Don't get me wrong, I love the process of setting up a deep sky rig out in the grass in the yard and the anticipation that comes with it of a night of imaging. But there are some nights when I just simply don't have the energy to go through the entire effort of setting up a rig for one or two hours worth of data. Now I just open the dome and start taking pictures. If I get one hour's worth of data on a project, great. I'll hop back over to it on the next clear night with the same framing and just keep building Building on it. You know those late nights of astrophotography where your rig is either running or parked waiting for you to tear it down the next morning and you're in that half asleep mode where it doesn't really count? It's not exactly a sound sleep. I don't have that anymore. I just close up the dome, lock up, and rest peacefully. No more waking up in a panic thinking you're hearing raindrops hit the roof. The observatory has a hatch to get in. It is not a door unless you're a toddler. I'm about six foot three and it is a bit tight squeezing through there. I've scuffed my back on the top of it a few times getting in and out. The pod is really weather sealed. We've had some big rainstorms over the last two months and it has stayed bone dry in here. It's not insulated, but having protection from wind actually makes a big difference on those cold nights. One thing that's kind of funny about owning an observatory, and I always heard this and I wasn't sure if they were joking or not, but the spiders are a real issue in here, a nuisance anyway. Every time I come in here, there's a new web draped across the telescope or the mount and usually through a night of imaging, I'll see one or two crawling by, hard at work making another one. Spiders just love observatories. One thing I hear people talk about a lot when it comes to the Skyshed pod is the design of the clamshell dome roof and how the zenith is blocked. So if you wanna shoot straight up with your telescope, it's blocked because of the design and no matter which way you rotate it, it's always gonna be blocked. Well, Skyshed Pod makes an additional accessory for this dome called the PZT kit. And all it does is essentially rolls the roof back a bit and opens up that zenith. Speaking of clearance, I think they got the height of the walls in the Skyshed Pod just right. It's kind of at that height where it feels like you're leaning up against the bar, which is really nice when you're standing out here looking up at the night sky. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the height of your pier or tripod is really important in an observatory. So Wayne suggested the ideal height for me was 32 inches off the floor, and that ended up being the absolute perfect height to mount my telescope because, of course, if you're too low, you run the risk of running into the wall if you've got an object low on the horizon, and if it's too high, you run the risk of running into the dome once you've got your guide scope and all those additional accessories on top of your scope. It's recommended that you place your pier about 10 inches south offset of center. This provides better clearance in the direction that I'm shooting 80% of the time. With the dome together, I've actually slid it around to find the sweet spot for my obstructions and where I shoot most often. I ended up pushing it forward a little bit from its original position just because I found it a little bit tight getting in the door. But once I finalize the spot, I'll bolt it down and that's it. The actual camera and telescope here in the observatory is a Skywatcher Esprit 100 ED apochromatic refractor and the camera is a ZWO ASI 2600 MM Pro. That's a monochrome CMOS camera. Both of those ride on top of the pride and joy of the Black Dog Observatory, which is the Paramount My T or Mighty Mount. This is a really great setup to have in here and definitely worthy of being mounted in an observatory. 
I'm thinking of mounting a larger telescope on here soon, and it's probably gonna be a Newtonian, but you'll have to subscribe and wait for that video a little later this year. After spending some time in this space, I now realize why an SCT is such a popular telescope choice for an observatory. That stocky length and the versatile configuration, it would make a great observatory telescope. I wanna take a minute to talk about Cuts Clothing, today's sponsor, the official outfitter of Astro Backyard. It's just me. With the colder weather on its way, they've sent me a closet full of comfortable hoodies and sweaters, and I'm told that pants and even outerwear are on their way. Gabe, I'm looking at the extended forecast, and I'm going to need an insulated power vest ASAP. If I'm not wearing that vest in the next video, my audience is going to flip. Cuts Clothing comes in different hem styles, so you can order the shirt that looks best on you. I have one of those body types where the type of shirt I wear can really make or break the look. I uh, guess what I'm saying is that I appreciate a little extra form in the shirt, if that makes sense. They make shirts that are pre-shrunk, breathable, and wrinkle-free. Clearly, you don't have to be a model to look great in this stuff. If you want to see what Cuts has available, there's a link in the description where you can take 15% off your next order. So thank you to Gabe and the team at Cuts for sponsoring this video. With this compact refractor mounted in here, about three to four people can comfortably hang out in here with me and geek out to some electronically assisted astronomy. A monochrome camera like this makes a lot of sense in a permanent setup. I can collect plenty of exposure time through each filter and build amazing images over time. After a brief scare with the dreaded oil leak problem, the ASI 2600mm Pro has been a dream and I'm taking my best images ever with it. I always start my sessions out here. I have to manually open the dome, of course. But once I've powered everything on, I can do almost everything from inside the house. I just log into my computer out here using any desk. I can control the telescope, change filters, change targets, run an imaging plan. The only thing I can't do from inside the house yet is focus. I do have an Optech autofocuser just waiting to be installed on the Esprit 100. The computer I use to run the telescope out here is the Acer Enduro N3. This is a rugged laptop. You may remember my video from last year about it. It is the perfect observatory computer because it can handle the extreme temperatures and dust and moisture and all the things from being outside all the time, even if it is protected in the dome. I've added a larger external monitor in here to extend the display of my laptop, which is great if I wanna take a closer look at the sub exposures coming through in the camera. And it just adds to the whole like command station feel in here. I also have my old stereo that I've been using for the last 11 years for astrophotography. And man, listening to music, even if it's quiet in the middle of the night, it has a way of making you feel a lot less lonely out here. Since we just hit 300,000 subscribers, I wanted to do something special for you guys. I have a Celestron Rasa 8 just sitting here and I wanna give it away. Back in 2019, the support of folks over at High Point Scientific lent me this scope and they're allowing me to give it away as a contest they're running. So I guess it's actually from them. Anyway, there's a link a little farther down in the description of how you can enter this contest. And if you want me to autograph the scope, I will. I, I really wanna sign it, but if you just want the scope, I totally get it. It should come as no surprise that the single most important part of your observatory is probably going to be the telescope mount itself. It will also likely take you the longest time to sort that aspect out. And this mount and the software used to control it were completely new to me. So it took a while to finally get it sorted out. The telescope is in the parked position right now and I can now control everything from my computer, whether I'm out here or inside the house without a hand controller. It took me several nights to get the Paramount MyT operating properly. A precise polar alignment and a lengthy T-point model were required. In fact, I ran a 90-point T-point model, which essentially is the telescope mount learning exactly where it's pointed in the night sky. You take a picture of the stars that it's pointed at, the software plate solves it, and it sends that information to the telescope mount and makes the adjustments accordingly. I have several obstructions here in my backyard, so that made running the T-point model interesting to say the least. Most notably, the giant walnut tree that blocks my western and northwestern sky. I also had to rotate the dome as it's pointing in all these different directions in the sky. Got my workout that night. An interesting note is that I'm not guiding with the MyT. 
It's not necessary for the mount to accurately track the sky and I can dither without it. I'd still like to fine tune the unguided tracking on the MyT even further, but I'm waiting until the leaves fall off my tree so I can add a few more alignment stars to that T-point model. To run the mount, I use a software called the Sky X and I'm gonna show you that now. Here's a look at the user interface of the Sky X. I'm getting used to the controls and I enjoy using it now, but I still find the planetarium to be a little dated and kind of ugly, to be honest. If you're used to some of the astronomy apps like Stellarium, this one is just, it looks like it's from 10 years ago. The camera and mount controls, however, are very intuitive, very easy to set things up. That part, there were no surprises. Uh, running an imaging plan is a piece of cake, just set it and forget it. The SkyX software allows me to control the telescope mount and the camera so I can slew to any object I want. I simply just search in the search bar, the deep sky object I wanna see, hit enter and it slews to it and centers it and I can start my new imaging plan. Because I have an internet connection out here, I transfer all of the images I collect to cloud-based storage and then when I get to the office, the data is sitting there waiting for me. This is how I'll finally build those long-term astrophotography projects with 10 to 20 hours of total exposure time. I might be under light polluted Bortle 7 skies here, but at least now I can fight back with total overall integration. Right now I'm taking four minute exposures through the S2 filter, the sulfur filter on the Pac-Man Nebula. The image you're about to see is the culmination of a lot of support, a lot of work over the years to get this backyard observatory to happen. You may have already seen an earlier version of the Pac-Man Nebula if you follow me on Instagram, but that S2 channel was pretty weak. So hoping to improve that and create an even better image. I'll share this one on Astrobin. Hopefully you guys appreciate it. And until next time, clear skies.